the Queensland Green slide at Saturday's federal election has been capturing headlines. There's also been a record support for a different kind of green in the Senate. A large swing towards the legalised Cannabis Australia Party shows a growing appetite amongst voters to decriminalise the drug. Queensland first outlawed cannabis in the 1930s. In 2016, Parliament approved it for medicinal use. Now we want more. One in 17 Queenslanders voting one for the legalised Cannabis Australia Party in the Senate. This is no longer a, a fringe issue. The party's ticket, led by Noosa lawyer Bernie Bradley, who doesn't use the drug but sees the impact criminalisation has. In 2020, 23,000 cannabis arrests were made in Queensland, more than double Victoria. There was a fellow only here yesterday who pleaded guilty uh, to possessing non-medicinal cannabis because, as he, his lawyer explained to the court, he couldn't afford the prescribed stuff. The party, now in a tight tussle with Pauline Hanson for the final Senate seat, despite her shoestring campaign budget. The vote makes perfect sense when you consider Queenslanders hold more than half of the medicinal cannabis scripts written nationwide. Stigmas towards the drug seem to be fading. Particularly the older population are becoming more aware of their use and the effectiveness. Relief on Noosa's tourist strip has built a solid customer base after opening just six weeks ago. Medicinal cannabis doesn't tend to have those side effects and actually helps treat those conditions better than some of the prescription medications. It seems we're now willing to at least have the discussion around decriminalisation. I think so. I think so, definitely. I suppose we should probably look at other jurisdictions across the world and see how they've gone. It could be uh, taxed, it could be regulated. In those states and jurisdictions where it has been decriminalised or legalised, the, the sky indeed has not fallen in. Nick Kelly. Not